Hello and welcome, the Networkberg here, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be focusing on showcasing a little bit of the, the amazingness that is virtual machines or VMs for short, and all of the cool and complex things that we can achieve with VMs in our networks. So let's get into the video. Alrighty, so let's start off the video just discussing what is a VM. Now I've got documentation open from Azure's website. I could have opened this up from AWS's website as well, both of which are massive cloud computing giants, but I just found this on the first search. So this is what we're going to use and I'll put it in the pinned comment. And I just wanna point out VMs are amazing because it allows us a means of creating virtual infrastructure on our own physical hardware if we want to, or on cloud-based solutions like Azure to build whatever we want. <laughs> you can build complex networks, you can build complex server setups, you can do stuff with apps. The possibilities are really endless. But what I love about VMs is the fun doesn't just stop there. And when you think about VMs, I want you to think there it says, virtual computers within computers. Now, does that sound like something? Maybe you've watched the movie Inception before. Let's just call this computing inception because this is what is so awesome about it. VMs allows us to take physical hardware, which I'm just highlighting with my mouse quickly. So a server, which is just tin with the host operating system, Windows, Linux, whatever you want to use. And then we've got something called a hypervisor. So a hypervisor, I just want you to think of this as something that allows our OS, our physical infrastructure to communicate and see and build these VMs. Now, hypervisors might be something like VMware Workstation. Um, you've got the free version called Player or the paid for version, which is called Pro. And these hypervisors, I'll showcase it in a second as well, gives you a way to just get on the VMs, build them, quickly start them up, run them, communicate with them. It's, it's really awesome stuff. Now, besides just virtual machines, we also get stuff called nested virtualization, which I find freaking awesome because nested virtualization allows you to put a VM inside a VM, which runs off of a physical piece of equipment. And it can go down as far down the rabbit hole as you want. And this has allowed people like Kit Boga. I don't know if you've watched any of his uh, videos before. He's big on YouTube. He also streams on Twitch where he basically uses virtual machines and makes silly Windows 7, Windows, whatever computers which are just VMs on his actual machine, but he contacts like people that work in malicious ways. And then he basically has a bit of fun on their behalf. They'll remote into his virtual machine. And meanwhile, he's actually having a laugh at them, trolling them a little bit by getting them to uh, even do stuff like syslock his, ser uh, his, his VM. And to him, it, it's, it's a joke because, you know, <laughs> he can just restore that VM from a different state and it doesn't really affect him at all because it was a virtual piece of hardware. He can do it with it whatever he wants to. It doesn't matter. Um, people also tend to use VMs in different ways. Perhaps you're a Linux, Linux fundi and you just want to use Linux because that's your preference. You could spin up stuff like a Windows VM to play video games which is something that people like uh, some ordinary gamers does. Mudahar, he's, he's also a pretty big YouTuber. And I just want to say I love VMs because possibilities are endless. Now, I'm not going to just go through this document and read what's on here. Like you can do this yourselves. It's just VMs gives you a way to create virtual hardware and build whatever you want. And if you've seen any of my videos, previous videos, you've seen me work on programs like GNS3 or even G where I build virtual network topologies using images of routers and switches, which work exactly like a real network because it is real network components. I'm building an actual real network. So the stuff that people tend to see in my videos when I use those topologies, even though it's on a virtual scale, it still does exactly what a, a real router would have done if I put it down. All right, now I just quickly wanna show you guys a hypervisor or two. So here I've got, um, VMware Workstation Pro open. This is just a trial license I'm running. You can trial this for free for, I think like 30 days and you can spin up a bunch of different VMs. So here you can see I've got a GNS3 VM, an even GVM. I've even spun, spun up a Kali Linux VM and here's an Ubuntu VM as well. 
And these are just virtual machines that are running off of my actual computer in real time at the moment. Now, this is something I enjoy about VMware Workstation Pro. It allows you to run these machines at the same time. Whereas if you use a free version like VMware Workstation Player, you can only bring up one VM at a time. But if you're using stuff like nested virtualization to bring up an Eve server, then you're, you're golden, you're fine. You can build up any topologies you want. So just to be clear, whenever I use EVNG, let me just quickly start up this VM. I'm just going to power it on. So this VM for EVNG, something I installed and I mounted a, an image for it. Now it's on my computer, it's starting, and this works now exactly like a normal Linux box. And in a moment, let's just go on to my Firefox browser. So let's log on to the Eve IP 192.168.149.128 in my case. And I'll just log in with my normal credentials. And here we can see this is actually what nested virtualization is about because Eve is allowing me to create topologies. And inside these topologies, I bring up nodes like on this uh, topology I'm just going to open with more VMs that's running inside Eve in real time so that I can build these actual topologies and play around and learn new concepts. And this is why I love, I love virtual machines so much because you can ideally now um, set up any type of network that you want to, and you can test and play around with any concept that you, you're not sure about in a very safe space. If you break anything, you can restore a VM state, or you can just redo everything without risking your production equipment, without breaking real hardware, because this in itself is very cost effective. Instead of buying multiples of different routers and switches and, and what have you, you can just bring up VMs for these devices. You know, you're not even physically buying them. You get the VMs, you get the images, load them on, and you don't need E for it. You can, uh, if, if it allows you to specific hardware like a, a Microtik CHR, you could bring up in a similar fashion and run it as a VM on your hypervisor of choice. So this is actually really important to us because besides learning about stuff like networking, you can delve into programming, you can delve into, well, I've said programmer DevOps, security ops, you can uh, look at exploitation stuff like how to become better at info security um, you can even look at the new cool stuff that people do with network automation where people are using ansible and other similar tools to automate configuration across the network as well as building an sdn type of network where all of your configs can be applied from a central point so i really really encourage everybody <laughs> if at all possible, if your hardware allows it, to find some form of virtualization that you can run on it. And even if it's the free stuff like VMware Player, which I've used for years, uh, you will still get a lot of benefit from it. You will be able to grasp things that you definitely wouldn't be able to grasp before. So let's just quickly look at also how easy and quick it is to bring up a new VM on a hypervisor like VMware Pro or even VMware player, it's pretty much the same principle. And all I'm going to do is go into the hypervisor and I'll tell this hypervisor, I want to create a new virtual machine. Now there's differences between creating a new virtual machine and importing a virtual machine because there are live images that you can just import and the VM, it's kind of like copied a VM from somewhere and then you just bring it up and it just starts up and has some very base configuration, but we're going to create a new VM from scratch. And here I've already got this Ubuntu 2.21.10 desktop AMD 64 ISO, which I downloaded from Ubuntu's website. You can get it there yourselves. Um, you just need to find the image once you've downloaded it, then you can just hit the next can give the stuff a name like uh, Ansible host, username, TMB, password, TMB123. So these are just credentials to log onto the router or <laughs> I say router so much because of Eve, apologies, uh, on the server. Um, now you can give the virtual machine a name, which is basically what, what it will show up here under your my computer. So I could just call this Ansible 
on Ubuntu. This location is also pretty relevant because this is where you will be storing the drive, the virtual disk, so to speak, of this VM. So you could set that to a drive that you've got plenty of space on just to make sure. Now you can set stuff like the hardest size. So I'm just going to leave it as 20, which is relatively small actually, but you can up that. And now we can customize our hardware if we want to. So here you can give it more memory. So depending on how much memory you have available on your physical machine, your physical server, you can set that amount. So I've got a nice beefy gaming computer. So I've actually got a decent amount of RAM, 32 gig on it. So, but I'm, I'm just going to maybe slide that down to 16 gigs. You can set how many processors you want, number of cores per processor. You can set the virtualized Intel VT-X. That is more for if you want to use nested virtualization. So that is also where, uh, if you're using Eve, you've seen me enable that on, on the Eve import the video before. Uh, this Think of this as a virtual CD-ROM, which is crazy, uh, which is that ISO we specified earlier. So th this we set up at the very first step when we started. Now this network adapter is also quite... Um, useful because this allows you to set up multiple network adapters if you want to but you could also just NAT the network adapter so that this VM will then have a NATed adapter with your host IP address so it can instantaneously communicate with the rest of your network and it can get internet breakout which is amazing and then you've got some other pretty basic uh, settings that you can just set here as well I might set something like uh, the monitor settings just force that to uh, 1080p and there you can see you can even see graphics memory this is crazy stuff and this is how far we've come so I'm just going to close that and we're going to click on finish and once this has been finished <laughs> I'm going to get chewed out because I don't have enough uh, so this is potentially because I've got the other VMs running at the moment so I'm actually running out of RAM so all I'm going to do is power off these other VMs quickly. So let's just power them off, power off. Because you are still limited to, because your VM is basically sharing your resources, you know, that's on your actual machine. So if you tell the VM it's got 32 gig of RAM, it's going to take the 32 gig of RAM. So let's just power off our other VMs so that there should be some RAM available. And I should just try and start this up again. And now it starts up without any issues. So we're fine. It, that was more a limitation because I had the other VMs running at the same time. So it was just about out of RAM. All right. Now, this this is like me popping a CD-ROM in a like an actual computer now and it's going to run a setup. And you could do this for Windows as well, which is crazy. You could get a Windows ISO. Uh, load up a VMware um, machine for it, and there you go. So here you can see this is the Ubuntu Linux, and we can follow some installation steps like you would do on Windows. You click Next, Next to fill in your details, and you're done. Uh, once you're done, the VM is there for you to use as you see fit. That was actually quite a loud sound, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to power off that VM. And I'm just going to open up the Ubuntu that I already had working. So I'm just going to restore that. Just so that you can see how useful this is, because this is now actually a real machine. It's not, it's it's VM, but it, it works exactly like any normal computer. So I can ping out, I can do whatever I want to from this machine. I can install Ansible on it, I can uh, run other Linux services or programs from here specifically. Uh, I can browse with uh, Firefox on it. This is amazing. And and you see it, it looks clean. It looks clear. It looks really good. And it's a great place for me now to learn and play around. And I'm, I'm hoping that with this video, you're at least seeing that it's not a scary thing, virtualization, that it is something that can help you, can benefit you, learn things a lot better, especially something that you might not be familiar with. Load up a VM for it, play around, and you'll get a feel for it. Believe me, you will become a pro in no time. All right, so this is actually where I'm going to end off this video. I want to thank everybody for watching. I'd like to thank my uh, YouTube members and Patreons. You guys have been helping growing this channel. 
and I, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do in this new year. This is amazing. And I'd like to thank you guys again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.